All right. Call the roll, please. There's nine members, all council members are present. This time we'll stand for the prayer. Anyone would like to lead the prayer? Let's bow our heads. We take this moment to acknowledge Almighty God and thank Him for our bountiful blessings, especially for the parish's natural resources. We pray for the protection of our parish, residents, and businesses during this hurricane season. We give thanks to God for our brave and courageous men and women in our military who daily risk their lives to protect our precious freedom, and we pray for our world leaders to know how to obtain world peace. We also pray that this government body comprised both of council and administration will always serve our parish with honesty, humility, and equality to all. And as this government body gathers here today, we pray for the wisdom to know right from wrong and the courage to do that which is right. Amen. Amen. General, will you lead us in a place, please, sir? Sanders, lead us in a place. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Time with uh, there any deferrals or withdrawals? We want I like to uh, withdraw the executive sessions A and B. Any other withdrawal or deferrals? I think that's what it is, John. Under ordinance, we get six B withdrawal. Six B. Yeah. Withdrawn on the first. Withdraw. Okay. Yeah. Any others? Okay. Would you please proceed to the agenda? Number three. Number three. Set a support by the port executive director. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, and members of the board. I am Sandy Sanders, Executive Director of Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District. Due to the very short reporting period of 17 through 24 July, I have nothing significant to report, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. I have nothing significant to report during this short reporting period. Next item, please. 3A, Financial Report, Budget to Actual. Financial report? And report. Nothing to report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Roussel has a question. Yes. yes. I, um, I, I looked at the report, and it's more of a format question than anything else. Um, if you look at the top, it's f the, the period of the reporting of the financial report says from 1-1-2019 1 1 through 12-31-2019. And then if you look at the report, it's obvious that this is only for uh, a different period of time, several months, three, four, five, six, whatever the reporting period is. And so it doesn't give you a clear picture of what this reflects. Now, there is a print date at the bottom of it that, for instance, 7, 18, 19, but uh, I think that the report needs some revision and to reflect the current period of time that the numbers represent. And so that's the, the only comment that I have. Sure, no problem. That's a that's a, a accounting format, and we'll get back to see if they make it clear, uh, more clear for you of the time period. Obviously, we're doing this on a month to month. We usually go by the date at the bottom, but the other date above is usually standard. But I'll work to see if we can make it more clear for the for the board if that's needed. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. There are no bids and advertisements. Number five: introduction of ordinances and resolutions. Anyone for the table? 
I have none. Next item. Number 6B, uh, 6B is withdrawn. 6C, a resolution authorizing and directing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District Chairman to enter into an employment contract with Maynard Sandy Sanders for services as Port Executive Director by signing the employment contract to enter into and set a contract for a term of five years authorizing and directing the Port Chairman to sign the documents to enter into the contract by the close of business on August 2nd, 2019, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'd like to offer with changes, please. Would you read the changes, please? Okay, the changes are on line four, changing the term of the contract from five years to three years. On line 11, changing the term of the contract from five years to three years. And on line 22, changing the term of the contract from five years to three years. It's also in the contract on page one, line 37, changing the year from 2024 to 2022. And that's the changes. And I offer with those changes. Second. Second it. Aubrey. Council Member Black, second. Yes. No, Aubrey. Aubrey. No, it's what you did. I'm sorry. Councilman Black did not. Right. Both of them second. All right. Uh, questions from the table. You want to? Okay. Mr. Russell. Uh, yes, Mr. Bartholomew, would you explain the uh, content of the contract to the audience for the public knowledge? Okay, Mr. Uh, Paul Matthews, so, uh, the contract is the same as 2016. That is correct. The con yes, that is correct. The contract is the same with those changes as uh, 2016. You want to discuss the impacts of it? Yeah, I, if that's, if that's the extent of the explanation of the contract. I mean, I'm looking for... Well, it's a standard. It's, it'll be a three-year contract um, with his current salary and... Uh, with that, all the responsibilities and duties as the board has uh, put into that contract regarding the duties for executive director as per the state statutes. Uh, uh, outside of his duties and responsibilities, there is uh, a trigger as it was in 2016 that if Venture Global goes into a lease, his salary will increase, increase to a certain amount. Um, but everything is, everything is the same as it was in 2016. Could you tell us the amounts? The amounts of what? Of the contract. The amounts of what? Of the salary and the increase. Whatever is, well, its current salary is. 40% It's a 194 currently. And so it's a 40% increase if Venture Global goes into a lease. So you're not prepared to, to give the numbers? Oh, you want me to do the math? Is that what you want me to do? I'm sorry. If you don't want to do it, I'll do it. Well, I don't know when Venture Global is going to lease, so once they do whatever the 40% increase is as his current salary, then that's what it would be. That's pretty standard. All right. Let, let me just go ahead and make my comments now um, and not dance around the table anymore. As you know, three years ago, I voted against this contract renewal because of the 140% increase. At the time of the parish, uh, we were laying off employees, and the increase to the the contract at the base pay was about 50,000 rounding it off. So looking at it um, today, the numbers that I have, current salary is $194,970. And once the 40% comes in, that's a $77,988 raise. So the salary will go to 272,958 if it's done by the end of this year. If it's not done by the end of this year and the 3% merit pay grows in January, then the raise goes up to $281,000 per year. And uh, personally, I believe that uh, the position that we are funding right now, that salary is extremely overpaid. And the reason that I say that is because from the documents that you sent out concerning surrounding Port Authority executive directors, I looked at all of that, and what we have today is we actually have a director position that is a marketing director. We have no ownership of working docks or grain elevators or anything like the surrounding 
port authorities that you are comparing the salaries to. So this position is, in my opinion, is strictly marketing director. The, uh, the comparisons are not, not made to be equal as far as job duties go, even though the contract says you've got to do all of these things. But there's no done. The other thing is um, I look at, we operate, you know, hopefully with the future. And I would have supported a one-year extension. But to get down to it, uh, you know, I've heard a lot about deliverables. And it came from this table that there were deliverables in the contract. Six or seven months ago, we asked when would the container applicant or prospect be signed. The answer that we got was that by June. June has come and gone. And so we had none. Now we have potential for the next six months to look at something. That's why I would say I was favorable to a year's contract. And then getting back to it, the existing contract that's in place was violated by the port in the use of credit cards, which is a direct violation of the existing contract. So I think that it's an overpaid position, 272000 or 281000 whichever one it's going to be. There's an extreme amount of money to pay. And, you know, I look at it as this way. We do a lot of entertaining. We do a lot of socializing. We pick up a lot of re restaurant bills, but we don't pick up any cargo. Until we get to that point, it is very difficult for me to support a, sa a salary of this magnitude. Having said that, um, I'll yield and ask anybody if they know where the deliverables are in the contract and what deliverables have been given. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just for information purposes, uh, uh, as Mr. Russell discussed, the salary uh, currently at 194. Uh, if you take a look at just the ports on the Gulf Coast, um, there's roughly 25, 26 ports on the Gulf Coast. Um, not only is it, I believe, it's the fourth lowest salary on the Gulf Coast. It's also the lowest on, on the Lower Mississippi River. And uh, it's my understanding, even, and I believe Mr. Russell's numbers are right, of if the salary increase were to happen, if Venture Global goes into a lease, that salary would actually still be below the average salary of Gulf Coast ports, uh, which the, the average salary of Gulf Coast ports is uh, 333, and that would be significantly below that number. Um, there's many different factors, obviously, based on revenue numbers that you can look at. For example, um, our revenue numbers are comparable to Greater Baton Rouge, um, Greater Port of South Louisiana, which are all on the Mississippi River. Uh, we can look at net positions, tonnage, and obviously uh, tonnage numbers. Those numbers include public docks and private docks for other ports. So I just wanted to give you guys that information um, regarding that. As far as a carrier, we have not put a timeline or date on anything as such. Obviously, that information is proprietary of what the what a carrier would uh, will want to do. So we have never put a time and date of somebody uh, having to deal or anything like that. So I just wanted to clarify that. And I'll go further then. Uh, the Port of Greater Baton Rouge, the Port Director makes 250000 a year. This is going to be in excess of that. If you look at St. Bernard Port, who actually moves cargo, has facilities and operates it, their Port Director is 197000 the same as what within a couple of thousand of what we're paying now. And so uh, if you go to other ports, you know, I've looked at them, and we are going to be even or in the neighborhood of the ports that really do a lot of work. So I, that was my point of bringing up the salaries. St. Bernard Port is our neighbor and does a lot more carrying of cargo than we do. So I'll leave it at that. And as far as no dates set, it was said that we would have a contract by June. I don't believe that's correct. I said we'd have a contract and it's market-based. Use the mic, please. I'm sorry. It'll be market-based and market-proven, and you know that we're on the verge of doing that. I'm hoping that we are, Mr. Sanders. and like We are, Mr. Roussel, and you know it. Look, I, I would, you heard it. I would, you heard it when they came here. I did. And I also heard that it was a study. 
And, you know, I, if I was fighting for a $280,000 a year salary, I'd be in your same position and, and making those statements. But thank you. So, therefore, I cannot support the contract with the 140% salary. And look, I, I understand the politics of it. I understand the votes are lined up and everybody's been, you know, met with and uh, taken care of. But this is my personal view. I voted against it, you know, last time for the same reason. And, you know, I know my co I like to quote one of my colleagues before we go off until he found out that it was in the original contract. And I think those were excellent words. It says, I do not think incentives for doing a good job is appropriate since the executive director's job is to do a good job. A team of port staff is critical in making progress happen. Should they also have incentives? I think not. The director should be subject to the same merit increases as his staff, no more, no less. And I believe those were excellent words. And I'll leave it at that. Finish. Mr. Russell, finish. Yes, I'm complete. Mr. Conovich? I brought it up the other night, too, because uh, in 2016, 140% raise would have been 50,000. Today, it's close to 80,000. And 194,000 is a good salary and shouldn't have merit increases just to do a, a job. And that's, that's where I stand on it. Thank you, sir. Blank. <clears throat> sure, my question centers around uh, equity and uh, Mr. Roussel just touched on it with uh, the question of <clears throat> If we're going to give a 140% salary increase um, effective with a performance-based measure like the signing of a lease, uh, do we need to do that with the other um, members of the admin team um, and folks on the ground at the port? And if we don't, you know, does that open us up legally um, to any sort of lawsuits or anything like that? That's all I have. As far as the rank and file, no. As far as contract employees, Mr. Matthews and myself, yes. So there would be incentives when his contract comes up. After he's been here for the three years, then we would develop incentives just like we did in 2016 for me. Albro. Albro. Yes. Albro. Um, I just want to concur with Mr. Roussel said, but also on page one of six, on line four, you see I have a problem with this. It says a political subdivision of the state of Louisiana. And on line 14, again, where is the port is a political subdivision of the state of Louisiana. You know, either we responsible for the port or the state of Louisiana is responsible for the port. Uh, those, those lines, what I just read on line four, uh, political subdivision of the state of Louisiana, I would like to have that crossed out, deleted, and uh, where uh, on line 14, 15, 16, and 17, I would like that to have uh, literally that, that paragraph. That's on the, con on the contract? You know what? That is on the contract. So what? Yeah. You want to make that amendment? Yes. Ken, did y'all have that? Uh, 
Mr. Carlson. And I, you want to move forward now? You want to Mr. John, hold on just a moment. Mr. John, I do have a question. In the first paragraph, you mentioned one line. Uh, where is it? On line four, four. where is it? A state political subdivision of the state of Louisiana. I would like to have that crossed out, Got deleted. It. And on line 14, 15, 16, and 17, I would like to have that whole paragraph deleted. Right, I have that down. Thank you. Okay. I have an offer by Council Member LaFrance to make an amendment to the contract. Would you please read those? On the contract, it will be removing the following phrase from line four, political subdivision of the state of Louisiana, and then lines 14 through 17, the paragraph that reads, whereas the port is a political subdivision of the state of Louisiana created by Act Number 567 of 1954 as amended of the Louisiana legislature and is engaged in the development and regulation of commerce and traffic of the Plaquemines port and such other activities as are permitted by law. Mm -hmm. offered, Mr. LaFrance, is there a second? Just for clarification, Mr. But that, Mr. LaFrance, is that the correct language that you're deleting? Yes. Have been seconded by Council Member Newberry. Discussion at the table on the amendment of the contract. Audience. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Lewis. Yeah. Everyone at this table knows that the language that is in this contract is uh, exactly what Act Number 567 says, word for word. I see no problem with this being in the contract. Uh, I understand that there's this big thing about the port and the state, the port and the charter and all of that. This language doesn't address that. This language is exactly what's in the legislative act. And I hope that everyone will vote against this amendment to the contract. I'm done. Councilman Black. My comments on a previous question that's that's currently being tabled. I'll allow this one to go through, and before I come back, if you don't mind. Con Mr. Conovich? I'd like to add another amendment to this. Hold on one. I would suggest that maybe Mr. LaFrance would, uh, and Trudy would withdraw a second. If you see agree with the, agree with the amendment, if not, we have to have two. So whatever is your pleasure on that. <laughs> you want to do two amendments or you want to do just do one together? On on page two or six. You want to take a recess and see if you want to discuss that? Take a three minute recess, please. Sorry. Newberry? Yes. Um, You're going to withdraw your second? I will withdraw my second. And you want to make an amendment? And I'm, right? I'm going to add to the amendment. Um, Mr. Sanders has really worked hard to get where he's at, and I would hate for him to lose any kind of, I would hate for Mr. Sanders to lose any kind of incentive on this project, on this on this contract. So my amendment is, Mr. Sanders, 
um, would be 110% at the signing of the lease, plus your 3% to follow every year until the end of your contract until we renegotiate. Will you go for that? That gives you 110%. You would go from 194. If this happens, you get a $20,000 raise plus you 3% a year after that if it happens by the end of this year. August the 4th to sign. I would think so. That's when your contract is up August the 4th. Right, so I have up to August 4th to sign it. Correct? Okay. I have been second offered by Mr. Newberry. It's the second to Mr. Newberry amendment. Okay. Second by Councilman Conovich. Are there any discussions from the table on the amendment to the contract? Councilman Good. Yeah, I'm good. sorry. Uh, key in, sir. Uh, I can't get you. All right, go ahead. Councilman Good. <laughs> Some of the history uh, here I think is important, and uh, whether it changes your mind or not, that's up to you to decide. Um, back in 2000, whatever it was, nine, uh, 13, 2013, we went through an exhaustive process to decide who we felt at that time would be the person that could take this port from a tariff and rescue port to a real port. Knowing that the entire process would be market driven, we had no money, we couldn't build anything, we couldn't invest in anything. It had to be market driven. The money had to come from someone else. After our uh, interviews, uh, it was decided to ask Sandy Sanders if he would be interested in coming into a port given the condition that we were in at the time, but also if he shared our vision. And our vision was to become a world-class port, to be able to generate jobs and revenues, given the fact that we had the Mississippi River and access, potential access, to a vast amount of property. When we decided on a salary, I told him we can't afford that. He was making a certain salary at Corpus Christi. He was not the director, he was director of operations, and uh, his salary was significantly above what we were abil our ability to pay, which was 175. When asked if he would accept that, given the fact that there was a shared vision and that there was opportunities available uh, with uh, probabilities, that uh, that salary would be commensurate, commensurate with his performance. He said, I know the potential. He said, I share the vision and I will take that salary in hopes that in the future that can be increased. During that process, he relocated, moved his family to Plaquemines Parish, became an active member of the community, bought a house in Belchase. That was all done since 2017, up uh, to 2013. When we talked about salaries earlier, we talked about averages, uh, we talked about where the Port of Platinum and stood in, the, in the, uh, the hierarchy of salary, but we didn't talk about actual tonnage and some of those factors. Uh, we do produce more tonnage than several of these ports that have uh, uh, directors who salaries are higher. And during our discussions the last several weeks, something was brought up about we really don't have the port facility. Now, we know it's market driven and it's going to be paid for by other people, 
but we don't have it. So apparently in 2016, that was a point of contention, and therefore the trigger was placed in, knowing that until we get a port, you don't get a salary increase. And I thought that was fair. So in 2016, it was decided that if Venture Global does go into a lease, that it would warrant a salary increase. And the wisdom at that time was that salary increase would be 140% of the present salary. But there would be no more 3% raises, uh, merit raises over the years. So it was kind of a give and take. And as Mr. Matthews said, even with the salary increase that would be triggered, by the Venture Global Lease, we would still be below the average of all of the ports. Now, you can play with these numbers all you want, and but those are really the facts. Yeah, there's some of these salaries in the $450,000 range. Of course, that raises up the average. There are some in the uh, under 200000 range. So that, but as an average, just given as an average. So uh, it's, it's my feeling that the contract as written is a fair contract. Uh, it is a trigger based on promises that were made uh, over the years. Nothing in writing, handshake deals, conversations. And I'm hoping that we can see, um, see to it that we're able to comply with the conditions of the contract as they're written and as they were in 2016. Uh, I think it's fair. I think you get what you pay for. And we are on the verge, I know you've heard this for years, we're on the verge of some groundbreaking uh, developments in Plaquemines. Those developments did not happen on their own. Those developments happened because of the work that's been done since 2013 to get the dominoes lined up. So when the guy with the big check shows up, we can show him we've done our homework. That's been done through the leadership of Sandy Sanders. There's no doubt about it. There's no argument about it. He and his staff have worked diligently. And yes, they have marketed. They have marketed every day. They market making Plaquemines Parish Port attractive for investment. And investors are starting to hear. So uh, I hope that uh, uh, you can see your way clear to look at those facts when voting on this amendment. I yield. Councilman Black. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Sanders, just, just to refresh everybody's memory of those who are not aware, I'll just ask you a couple of questions. Hey, when did you happen to go to college? United States Military Academy at West Point. And after that appointment, um, did you have any postgraduate education through the Army? I have a master's degree in strategic planning from the Army War College. And when you were commissioned as an officer, what was your MOS? I started off in artillery, then I was moved to transportation, and then as I moved up, I was in logistics. The transportation logistics was your, uh, your, your major career field. And how many years did you spend in the Army? 32 years, and mostly in logistics. And you retired as what? Two-star general. What is the highest rank in the, in the Army Officer Corps? Four-star general. Okay. When you left the Army and retired after 32 years, where did you go to work? I went to the Port of Corpus Christi. I was the deputy port director. So the deputy port director of Port of Corpus Christi. That was a, obviously a brownfield uh, working port, right? That's correct. You know, Dr. Gooey said it. You, you get what you pay for. And, you know, I sit here and I look at a, at, at a decorated retired two-star general who has spent 32 years working in transportation and logistics. Now, if you think you can find somebody for $150,000 a year to do what, what, what he's capable of doing, I think we're all crazy. Um, 
you know, and I get back to the contract and the amendments, and I do take some exception to all these amendments going on at the table. Dr. Gooey introduced this over a month ago. We've all seen the contract. We've all had discussions, and this all could have been done off the camera um, and, and, and done in a different type of way. So I'm not going to vote for any amendment. I think we had an opportunity to do amendments. Uh, we've had multiple discussions. I know that the chairman has called multiple important meetings uh, with members of the, of, of, the, of the port board and as well as the, the administration to hash out these particular items. So we're sitting here spending 45 minutes to an hour making changes to a contract um, and, and to an ordinance to, to, or to a resolution to uh, have this contract executed. So I think that's in and of itself um, not appropriate. Mr. Russo had mentioned deliverables, and I agree with the deliverable comments. I do, because I was the one who said, let's put deliverables into it. I went back to my office to try to dig up the deliverables. Unfortunately, I had some, some IT issues, but I can remember a bunch off the top of my head. And two of the main ones were, well, a couple of the main ones was VG, right? The other two were actual, what people think of as a port. Um, you know, cargo, uh, containers, bulk, those type of things. Now, we're on the verge, and I think everybody at this table has met with folks who are interested. And I think everybody knows, um, in good faith, that we are very, very, very close. So I think those deliverables, I can give him some leeway. And the reason why I give him leeway on those deliverables, like Mr. Gooey said, is that it is market-driven, and the market just came, came around. It, you know, you don't get these things done in, in, in two or three years. It takes some time because of the market changes. I give them leeway because in Section 3D of the contract, there is a termination clause. So in a few months from now, if that thing falls through, this council has the ability to terminate the contract then with notice. So it's not like we're giving him a three-year extension and that's the payment. The other issue that I have is, is in regards to the deliverables in the, in the Venture Global contract being uh, executed, is that it's going to be executed. And in the 2016 contract, that was an incentive for him, and it's got pushed back a lot, not just by him, but by this previous council, not this council here, but by the previous council. We had issues with permits. We had issues with some other items. So it's not Mr. Sanders' fault. I mean, we had issues all along the way with, 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 with making sure that the product that Venture Global was, was going to give us and the due diligence was done. And now we're just a couple months away from having it executed, and we're not going to authorize that incentive. I mean, I, I think there might be a legal issue with offering somebody, having somebody, having an incentive in somebody's contract, knowing in good faith that it's going to be executed within a few months, and then taking that incentive pay from this contract. I, ha I think there's a legal issue with that. So therefore, I rest. I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not going to vote on any of this. Once this amendment passes, I'm Mr. Chairman. I withdraw my second on the original uh, question. Thanks. First, I'd like to thank you for your service to the country. I respect you for doing that. Number two. We wanted to have executive session to air it out, but they didn't want it. So, and I'll, I'm not for any incentive. He's doing his job. We don't pay any other employee incentives. And it's not against the rule because that thir 2013 uh, was the uh, one he signed. This is a new contract. So we could take in or put in whatever we want. Finish, Councilman. Councilman uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I should add some comments to this, but uh, you know, all that's been said, I understand. I think the contract, as amended, will be a fair contract. Uh, you know, and the speculation of us signing new deals as far as port container shipping and all. Uh, I hope that it happens, but there's no guarantee. The, uh, the amendment, I think, is well placed and I'll support it. Thank you. Comments from the table and any other comments? Audience? 
Still a problem. With this new contract, this new contract, number one, would pay more money than the superintendent of schools who work to educate our most precious asset is our children, which is uh, about approximately 5,000 children, and also would be more money than our parish president, who have to represent 23,000 people in the parish put together. So, with that, I yield. Any other comments from the audience? Voting on the amendment. Would you please read the amendment? Okay, you mean to recap all the amendments? No, the one we voted, yeah, everything that we had added to it would just be in the final amendment. Yeah. On the added amendment, the second amendment by Council Member Newberry, it's changing the increase of the director's salary to 110% versus 140%. And then at the end of that paragraph on line 91, we're removing one sentence which states, in the event that the lease incentive takes effect, the annual 3% increase in accordance with paragraph C will cease. We need to amend the first, you want to, read, you want to hear the first amendment, Dr. Goy? That one. Yeah, on that end. That's what you just read. No, I just need it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Mr. LaFrance. Yeah. All right, the machine is open on the amendment only. I'm sorry, hold, hold on, take the vote. You want to say something? This is just for information purposes to Mr. LaFrance's comments. The mayor of New Orleans makes $140,000, $150,000 a year. The port director of the port of New Orleans makes $325,000 a year. Jefferson Parish president makes roughly around 150000 a year. The Port of New Orleans Port Director makes three twenty-five. dollars The parish uh, president of St. Bernard makes around one forty, one fifty. dollars The Port Director of Port of St. Bernard makes one ninety-seven. dollars So we're comparing apples and oranges. And it's just for information purposes. I'm not trying to make an argument. I just want to make sure we understand that we're not comparing apples to apples here. We're comparing apples to oranges on that issue alone. That's it. <coughs> Machine now is open for the amendment. Vote on the amendment on machine is open. As a, uh, audience has amendment. The audit audience uh, amendment passes uh, six with three of three <coughs> votes. Mr. Chairman, I withdraw my second on a uh, motion as strongly as ever. Is there a second for the amendments as amended? I offer it there a second. Mr. Yeah. Richard uh, offers a second. The machine is, I mean, the table is open for discussion. Anybody want to discuss? Audience? <coughs> Councilman Black. Mr. Sanders, obviously this is not going to pass. Oh, it's going to pass as amended. Um, I'm sure you make enough money in retirement. I hate to see you leave. Uh, I think it would be devastating to our community, to our port to what we worked for since 2012 when uh, the Dr. Gooey's leadership made a, a serious change to make a difference in this parish and not get stuck on the wake, no pun intended, of places like Port Fouchon, who has uh, been progressive and moving forward. And I'm sure that Port the Right to make quite a bit of money as well, Paul. So, um, you know, with that said, uh, it's going to be a shame that this is going to pass as amended. Uh, I wouldn't hold it against you if you decided to uh, you know, go other places. Uh, and I hate to lose you as a neighbor. So, with that said, I have no more comments. Councilman Gooey. In addition to what Bo says, I'm asking you to stay. Ms. Newberry said something very profound earlier in the week. She said the contract, if it's in three years, by then, this place should be rolling, and there should be no question about what you've done. There's no question in my mind. I've seen it from its infancy. We are so far ahead of the curve, it's astounding. We are being recognized globally for the work that you've done. We need to keep that work going. 
and it's unfortunate that we have to face this, uh, this is going to pass, and I'm going to vote for it, because I'm not voting against your contract. Um, and with those stipulations that have been amended, I'd like you to give some serious thought to what our vision was, what our vision was in the beginning and what our vision still is today. We don't need to break that, that vision. We need to keep that vision going, and you're an integral part of that. I yield. Audience and questions? Legislation passed 7 2. Black and Albro abstain. Next item, please. Number seven, new business, there is none. Number eight, approval of the July 16, 2019 special meeting minutes. Offer is there a second? I'll second. Second, Councilman Black. Any discussion at the table? Audience, the team is open. Passes. Next item, please. Adjournment. So moved. Mr. Roussel moved. A second. Port machine is open. Meeting is adjourned at 150. You have a five-minute recess. Everybody's fast. Meeting is adjourned.